And then they call me back later and go, man, that thing moved like an eighth of an inch. Is that bad? No, it's not bad at all. It's horrible. Five, one, two, three, four, five things that I always look for as soon as somebody comes up to me and says, my mill's not cutting straight. And most of the time, a mill that doesn't pass the first five tests is not going to pass the slicing wood straight test. I get quite a few questions and comments of people asking me about the common things or they can optimize on their mill that I optimize on my mill. I started with a chainsaw mill. I've run some saw mills. Started with a chainsaw mill. I called it the puker. It was tough. I'd go until about I was ready to puke, and then I was done for the day. And then I would do it again the next day. Then I moved up to an LT15, probably one of the best mills I've ever owned. All manual, low horsepower. I mean, even low horsepower for today's LT15s. And that thing cut some straight wood. Of course, then I went to an LT40, uh, heavy duty, full hydraulic, and I was pretty impressed with that. And then eventually I moved to the LT70, super wide, and it does pretty good as well. Of course, as you will never saw straight wood and flat wood and high grade wood if your sawmill is not dialed in. It'd be like asking a professional chef to make a good filet mignon with a dull butter knife that's bent. It ain't going to happen. So let's start with the number one reason you're not cutting flat wood. Now that's not that, I mean, let's get past, you've got to have decent saw blades, right? <laughs> so let's put that down as number one. If you're not using good saw blades you're not going to cut flat wood now i get mine from joe main he's the best if he wasn't the best i wouldn't be getting him from him you you call him up and say i sent you um he builds the best saw blades i've used if there were better i'd be using them set simple number one if you ain't got good saw blades and they're not sharp and they're correctly set and they're the way they're supposed to be forget it it's not going to happen a uh, general rule of thumb with saw blades, though, is that you need to be running the thickest, widest saw blade you can run that your mill is rated for. So whenever you're buying saw blades, you need to think of things like uh, flexural strength, beam strength, stability in a cut, just the mass of the blade. And basically what that says is run the biggest, baddest blade that your mill can handle. You'll know that you can't handle it when it won't run it. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy 10 boxes of blade. I'm saying talk to your blade manufacturer. Say, hey, I want to try a bunch of different blades. That's what I did with every saw I own, even this LT70 manufacturer. You need these. I went, now, I tell you what, won't you give me one of these and one of these and a couple of these and a couple of these? And I, I figured out for myself, right? Um. It's your sawmill. It's your wood. Uh, manufacturer's recommendations are exactly that, recommendations. Basically, the lower angle, the easier, the better the blade will cut in hardwood. So, for example, a four-degree blade will cut better in hardwood than a nine-degree blade. Uh, by the same token, a four-degree blade is going to cut slower. I like seven degrees... Uh, I run uh, Woodmiser Turbo 7s, not the 747s, the Turbo 7s. I like them. Uh, in case you're wondering, I do run 055 thousandths inch and a half Turbo 7s. Now, the issue with the thicker blades is they will not have the flex life. Thinner blades will last longer because they can, they're more flexible. They won't fatigue as easily. Again, that comes down to, do you want a blade or a band that's going to cut flat, it won't last as long. We're talking about through resharpenings, you know, multiple resharpenings. I like a blade that will cut flat wood when I'm sawing right then. I worry about when it's going to break two sharpenings from now. I'll worry about that later. But I make money off making flat lumber, not by saving money on a bandsaw blade.
then that buildup is going to go between the band and the roller, right? Right down here. And it's going to cause that band not to roll correctly or ride correctly on the roller. And why in the world would you pay somebody a ton of money to grind, precision grind these rollers, make them out of hardened metal so that they will drive your saw blade perfectly if you've got a big bunch of crud, glued on crud right through here? I mean, like I said, I can't tell you how nasty I've seen it. It's not going to work. Get it? Nada. Not going to work. Your goal is clean bands, clean rollers. That's number two. Number two. two. Peace. That's number two. Your next question is obviously going to be, what kind of lubricant do you use? Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, this is a simple answer. If your saw blades are staying clean, you're using the right lube. If they're not, you need to change. What you use in your lube tank needs to be both a lubricant and a cleaner. It's really designed to keep the pitch off your blades. Um, if you didn't believe that, then what does Woodmiser and a few others recommend putting in their lube tank? Pine saw. Do you know why it's called pine saw? As in pine solvent? Because it's a cleaner. At any point, did I say that the stuff that goes in your lube tank is a coolant? It's not a coolant. If your saw blades are getting hot, there's something wrong. People go, well, no, you need water on your saw blade to keep it cool. Well, guess what? You're sawing a log. That's a log that's got water in it. It's probably anywhere from 50 to 30% moisture. Your log provides more than enough coolant to keep your saw blade cool. If it's starting to smoke, you're doing something wrong or there's something wrong. Now, some of you folks have seen some of the videos I did earlier, I don't know, about this time last year where I was talking about, uh, I could see steam coming from the saw blade. The steam was from the band getting too hot because it was a bad cut. The body of the band bearing on the surface of the wet wood, the wet wood coming off of steam. Right there, that tells you that that band was getting enough coolant from the water in the log until something went wrong. Don't use the term coolant for what goes in your lube tank. What kind of cleaner should you be running? Well, I mean, some of it depends on the kind of wood you're cutting. If you're cutting a lot of pine, you need something that's going to dissolve pine pitch. If you're cutting a lot of hickory, you need something that's going to dissolve hickory pitch. Now, it's a true statement that if your band gets hot once, if that pitch is black, take it off because you're done with it. Um, a hot band, a band that's been overheated will typically never cut well again, at least until the pitch has been cleaned off or the, um, um, uh, band has been resharpened and reset. So one way that you can use to find out if you're using the right band cleaner, it's pretty straightforward. Take some of your cleaner and put it on your fingers and rub it on the band. And what you want to do is find out, when you put it on there, which one actually softens the pitch. I'm a big fan of using oil. There's several different kinds of oil. I know some folks don't like using diesel oil. That's fine. You know, the next best use is something that's called cotton picker spindle cleaner. So we're down south. There's a lot of cotton. Million dollar cotton pickers. They're going through the weeds, the grass, the roots, the garbage. And all that green material builds up on the spindles. And anybody, like, if you got to understand it, a company like John Deere, <clears throat> Case, New Holland, <clears throat> Massey Ferguson, those guys, they will develop fluids to clean that organic material off that hardware. They'll clean it and they'll lubricate it. And they'll keep it from rusting in the future. Well, guess what? 
Some of that is incredibly good for cleaning saw blades while you're using them. So I really like using a, it's an odorless water-based um, oil emulsion, cotton picker spindle lube, cotton picker spindle cleaner. And I like diesel oil and well, and the key with oils is it's extremely easy to use too much. If you can smell it, you're using too much. It's that simple. If you look at what you're using as a band cleaner and lubricant, and it doesn't stick to the band, the band rejects it, or it's, you get done and you smell like an oil rig, or it's not cleaning the band, you need to try something different. Let's go to rule number four. You, you can really get into the weeds of a saw blade. There's no need to. Think of a saw blade and alignment as an airplane wing. The band is gonna go up or down based on the direction that it's setting. Just like an airplane will fly up if the wing's up, it'll fly down if the wing's down. You want level flight, the band and the wing should be flat level. So, rule number four. Think of your saw blade as an airplane wing. Let's check them real quick. There's a, there's a real quick way to check it. This little guy, I don't care what sawmill you've got, what brand it is, if you don't have a blade guide alignment tool, well, or something similar, get one. The reality is you don't just get one. You, need, you really need two of them. There's a reason you need two. I'm fixing to show you. Um, these clip onto the band. These are made by, well, you can tell who these are made by. These clip onto the band, and they show how the band is angled. And I don't know that I've ever seen anybody use two of them. I mean... It seems obvious to me you'd use two of them because you've got two points that require adjustment. You've got two rollers. You got a roller here that needs to be an adjustment. You've got a roller here that needs to be an adjustment. And this roller needs to be adjusted in the same plane as this roller. Because if it's not, remember, think about the old airplane way. Who would ever fly in an airplane if one wing is pointed in a different direction than the other one? I see this all the time when people call me up and they're asking for help on their sawmills. And I said, have you used your blade guide alignment tools? And they go, I don't even have one. Well, then they get one. Well, you need two of them. Here's why. Watch how quick this is. Take blade guide alignment tool number one. You notice they sell them with the clip in the middle. Well, that's stupid. You're trying to get an alignment and an angle. So you want the longest lever arm you can get, indicator arm. So move the clip to the end. Come down here, go between the teeth, clip it on the band. It should be tight against the bottom of the band. I mean, you can go on top of the band too, I guess, but I was like going under, doesn't matter. Put it by that roller, come over here. Go between the teeth, clip that on, go between that roller. You want to make sure that you're coming out of the gullet because the gullet's the flattest part of the band or a flat part. You want to make sure that it's lined up parallel so you don't get some kind of optical illusion. Now, if this airplane wing is lined up with this airplane wing, then these guys will be perfectly parallel to each other. If one angle's different than the other, then I got a problem. Well, let's just find out. See how quick this is? Watch this. Let's come over here. Let's sight down. Uh, let's see if I can get this on the camera. We're gonna go right through it. And I'm looking at it and the edges are absolutely perfect with each other. If one was pointed down, it's obvious. See that? That means 
one wing is lower than the other and it's not going to cut straight. Get two B-gats, blood guide alignment tools, flip them on, check them. All right, let's do number five because this is a big one. Five. Idle side, because this is the engine side. This is the idle side. Blade guide adjustment. Arm. This is the arm. Stiffness and tightness. What that means is everything here goes to here. If this isn't right, you're not going to saw right. The only thing holding this on is your blade guide arm. If your blade guide arm isn't right, guess what? This ain't going to be right. So there's two things you need to do to test it. First of all, tighten up your band, grab something handy, and start leaning on it. You want to twist it up. Now what you want to be doing on um, twisting, find something to look at. Like right here, see there's a little glint. And as I'm twisting as hard as I can, I'm wanting to see if this thing I'm grabbing this thing. I want to see if this thing's moving at all. Now, you can see what it says. I'm shaking a whole sawmill head. This thing's like rock solid. It needs to be like it's welded. If it moves at all, well, guess what? That's, that's kind of like having your wing not bolted on correctly. A lot of folks really would not get on an airplane if they had doubts about the wing being bolted on. All right, so you check that, and then you release your band tension, grab it, and do it again. So at first, you had a lot of tension stiffening things up. Now, this arm is completely unsupported. Now, if there's any looseness, you should see it. You need to wiggle back and forth, up and down, and it needs to be solid. Not like your grandma's old loose teeth. This one needs to be solid. Come over here and grab it. Watch where it goes in here into the rollers, the guides. There should be no clinking, no clunking, no nothing. There isn't. If it's bad, you'll see some movement. You'll feel You'll feel it give. It won't be much. It's too much. It needs to be gorilla tight. Cannot move. If your blade guide arm moves, that's holding your blade guide rollers, which is directing your band, and you will not cut flat wood. The entire transfer of load from all of that into that is happening here and here. Kind of puts things in perspective. Super important. I can't tell you how many times somebody's called me up and said, my mill's not cutting straight. And I say, reach down, loosen up your band, grab your blade guide arm, and just start wrenching on it. And then they call me back later and go, man, that thing moved like an eighth of an inch. Is that bad? No, it's not bad at all. It's horrible. If you've learned something, I tell you what I would appreciate though, since you did watch to the end of the video, and I do talk in Southern, so I don't talk real fast because, you know, that's just the South. <laughs> we don't talk that slow. <laughs> I just want to piss off you northerners. <laughs> anyway, um, so what I would like you to do in the comment section, um, comment on what you're seeing, what you'd like to see, what you're thinking, because that really helps me figure out what I want to do in future videos. I've been doing this for a couple of days. <laughs> There's a reason my buddy Nathan out of the woods, Nathan, um, he's got a great sawmill channel. There's a reason he nicknamed me the Wood Yoda 
So if you are a friend of his or if you watch his channel, please go on his channel and bombard him. Say that the Wood Yoda said hi. He will know. I'll probably get a text as soon as you do that just to aggravate me. Look at this big old ugly pecan log. I got some work to do. Oh, I just thought of number six. I'll cover it on the next video if you want me to. There's number seven. Look at that. We know what that is. If you don't know what that is, you should know what that is because this is for a sawmill. So I stopped at number five things you should know. I'm already at number seven. And if you want to know those, let me know in the comments and I will make another one of these videos and I'll call it the next five through 10 things you probably ought to know if you're going to run a sawmill. Anyway, this is Robert Milton, Hobby Hardwood, Alabama. Y'all have a good day and have some fun sawing because it really is fun. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos. Running a band that you know is not the best for your sawmill is false economy. You, you, you with your mill have to find out what is the best blade for your style, for your sawing technique, for your lumber, and that's up to you. Go to different manufacturers. There's some good blade manufacturers out there. I've used a lot of, I've actually pretty much used all of them. But I know what I like to use, but that doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean that's best for you. So that was number one, and I'm already tired of talking. The neck's hurting. Let's go to number two. It's got to do with the saw blade again, except this is the rollers. People call me up and they go, how come my sawmill's not cutting good wood? First thing I'll say, show me your rollers. Show me your roller guides. And I'll look at them, and if it looks like a muddy road in Georgia, hey, guess what? There's a problem. You can't cut flat lumber if your roller guides aren't clean, just like brand new. Now, I'll show you what I'm talking about. You see how nasty this is. I've been cutting a lot of wood. Look at my roller guides. They are shiny. There is zero pitch buildup on them. Look at the saw blades shiny you can see where the rollers are actually running on you can tell i've run this blade this is not a new blade this this is not youtube magic this is hobby hardwood real life what's the one thing that jumps out as being clean it's the roller guide don't believe it we get the drive side same thing it's got a little salt dust in there look how clean that is look how clean the blade is if there's buildup on this saw blade, on the body of the blade, 